Question, 30 seconds, max. Okay, Grattan. Over here, is it? No, it's not, I beg your pardon. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Just speak. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, uh, we David can hear Hughes you. from the Passive House Association of Ireland. Um, I was just taken by the notion that Tesla is in effect disaggregating the sort of electricity generation, well, it's more storage, but it, it provides a way of storing it. And I'm just interested in the phenomenon now, which is the growth of data centers. Uh, here in just now, in Facebook is planning a 100 megawatt data server just north of Dublin, and Apple about a 240 megawatt uh, data server in Galway, which together would be the same as every single charging station that Tesla now has in America. So that gives you the same idea of scale. It's about 200,000 homes for Facebook, about 400 towns for, for Apple. That's the equivalent energy that they will consume. Now, I'm interested, there's a company in Germany which uses... It'll be very quick. You've yeah, now 45 is, seconds. Yeah. There's Gone. a company in Germany another five. which is providing free hot water and space heating by putting a server in people's homes. So what they do is they, instead of the, the heat from a data center being wasted, that heat is then used to provide a secondary function, which is to provide hot water in homes. So I'm just wondering, with the idea of Nest and Tesla, is there a future for looking at providing data centers in this way instead of in these big monoliths, which maybe will be the dinosaurs of the future? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes? Uh, Damien Costello from the IERC. Um, we heard from um, uh, Jermid, in particular, pointing out that uh, <coughs> Tesla, and obviously Nest as well, are valley companies. And valley companies are typically uh, the best in the world at acquiring customers. And Amory pointed out later that, asked the question, which future would you invest in? And valley companies are also the best in the world at attracting capital. If you guys have all the customers and all the capital in future, what position do you see for utilities in your vision of the future? Okay. Maybe we'll take those two questions first. Would you like to emerge? Yeah. Uh, on the first, um, I, I don't know the server business well. I've seen a lot of big server farms. Um, but uh, to the point that you were, your premise, I think that, yeah, absolutely what we're moving to is, is kind of a back to the future kind of concept where you know, energy generation and use used to be uh, used to be widely distributed, uh, local, and and frankly, you know, we've spent the last hundred years developing scale in the business for very good reasons that actually go to the point that the second gentleman, uh, for for reasons of economy and democracy and so forth. Um, but uh, the, the 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 future that these technology, this introduction, the introduction of this technology, offers is um, is is are multiple. Um, whether it's uh, extension of, of energy provision to, to rural parts of the world that have never been served, more efficient, uh, uh, more efficient uh, distribution of electricity or generation of electricity um, uh, in developed parts of the world, uh, and of course, cleaner uh, energy generation and use everywhere. I think that certainly uh, these, um, the, the descaling uh, that some of this technology offers is, uh, is, is, is tremendous. Uh, to, your, to the gentleman's point here, which is suggestive of, uh, of, a, uh, of, a, of an incipient monopoly uh, <laughs> situation, uh, it's, I, I, I don't mean to laugh at the proposition, it's a serious one, but um, you know, we are at the very earliest stages of uh, the development of some of these technologies and the distribution of these technologies. And while it's wonderful to hear that the reputation of those of us in the Valley is uh, as uh, omnipotent as you suggest, I would suggest that uh, uh, that um, that our reputation perhaps exceeds us in this regard, and that um, as and to the point of democracy in the distribution of electricity and uh, and the the huge improvements that rural electrification have led to all over the world in terms of quality of life and and humanitarian other humanitarian issues. Those problems are going to get solved. It is the nature of, of, uh, of the less regulated, more free, orient, free market oriented societies that we, that as the new technologies emerge, they 
uh, they certainly challenge the regulatory and, uh, and industry structures that they confront, but that over the course of time, open dialogue and the emergence of you know, free market ideas around the provisioning of services emerge uh, to the point where there's no, you know, there's no need to either fear the specter of monopoly or the reality of it. I, it's just the, the, my simple way of, of thinking about it. Scott, would you like to? Sure. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. Go ahead. Sorry. You've you got the floor. Go let, ahead. Let me, let me uh, hit, take a slightly different version of your question, which I might, might be what you were asking. Um, and I've had it put pretty directly to me by some of the utilities with whom we work or, or would like to work, with, uh, with whom we'd like to work, uh, who say, um, we don't want you to steal our customers. We want to own the customer. Um, to which I say, uh, Nobody owns a customer. The concept of owning a customer is a little bit, um, I, I think, wrong, wrong, the wrong way to think about it. We, have, we continue to try to earn the right to serve a customer through continuing to deliver uh, an outstanding experience, surprising and delighting them. And we believe very strongly that our ability to surprise and delight our customers uh, is going to be amplified to the extent we've got strong partners. Uh, we work with Electric uh, Ireland, and you can see a, a, a display back there, which from a few, uh, from, a, from a little bit of a distance, doesn't necessarily look, uh, you can't, can't tell whether it's a Nest display or an Electric Island display. They work with other thermostats as well. They're not just, uh, it's not just a Nest that they're offering. So our view is we can help one another to, to, to continue to earn that right to serve our, our collective customers, and there really is no question of ownership in our mind. Thank you. Now, we're here. And your name is? Thank you very much. Uh, Jack O'Sullivan, a question there for Tesla. What advice would you give to the Irish government as the strategy that should be employed to enable a far greater use of the electric car in Ireland, given the following three facts? One, that the Irish car has driven far more miles per year than the car in the United States or in any other European country. And fact number two, that with our dispersed population, it doesn't seem to be possible to have enough charging stations or even enough people who can service the car, which results in the following problem, that a person who lives outside Dublin, like myself, will decide not to buy an electric car because there is nobody there who can service it. So that means there are not enough people to have service agents, so you have a kind of a, a situation which is like a circle and can't be, how do you break that circle? And finally, how can we get Tesla cars for sale in Ireland? Thank you. <laughs> what a great question. Anybody over here? I, Front row here, uh, please. Thank you very much. Thank you for that great question. Uh, hello, Eamon Conway's my name. I'm a co-founder of a home technology company called Climot here in Ireland. Um, question for both guys uh, on the, um, Smart heating, smart, uh, smart thermostat uh, scenario. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, Scott has a view as to how um, mass, customer, mass customer employment would happen and what the challenges are. And similarly for the Powerwall, um, at, I can't remember your figures, uh, $3,500 for a 10 kilowatt uh, battery. Uh, how, what would your ambitions be for mass deployment and how would you see the consumer messaging um, to achieve that? So Thank it's you. about custom, customer deployment uh, in okay. volume is the challenge I see. Thank you. Now, Dermage. Uh, I'll take the first. And you can yeah, the first. exactly. I love, I love your premise. Uh, I don't think electric cars are going to work in Ireland, but when are you going to bring yours here? Um, <laughs> um, so uh, the, uh, I, I think the proposition is, is, is simpler than the complications you suggest. I don't know what the driving statistics are in Ireland. Um, but having ridden around the country on a bicycle in my, in my uh, teens, uh, I, I know that the geography is somewhat compact. Um, the fact is that, that our cars are built with long range, um, uh, longer range than frankly they need even in the United States. Uh, so the model, the, the model, the Roadster um, exploded you know, previous notions of range by offering 245 miles of range. The, the Model S increased that to 265 miles of range. At 265 miles of range, you cover more than 95% of driving instances in the United States, 
And frankly, our study is that with 200 miles of range, our, our empirical study based on the billions of miles that, we, that, our, that our customers have driven and that we have studied with their permission, that 200 is going to be perfectly sufficient. The problem at the other end of the market is that the Nissan Leaf and others started with a more, uh, they, they started with a mass market premise, so they scaled their battery down to the delivery cost of the vehicle and they ended up with, with shorter range vehicles that do present a public charging problem. With a, with a Tesla product, the current or the future, which will have at least 200 miles of range, all, almost all of your charging incidents are going to be in the home. So you, you charge while you sleep. Not a problem. You plug in an existing infrastructure. No need even for special architectures within the room or special equipment. For, for the long range driving experience, so from, from Dublin down to, let's say, Kerry, uh, we'll have a network of superchargers um, throughout, the, throughout the island, as we do everywhere else that we, uh, that we operate, which will make that, long de that, that periodic long distance driving experience both easy, uh, um, uh, quick, and, and free. Um, that, that's not both, that's all three. Um, and so, uh, and so that, will be, that will be the architecture. As to the question of, uh, of when we will be here, uh, it's, uh, we're, we're certainly studying the opportunity closely. We're not so far away. I can't project a date, um, but, uh, but I, I think that it's, uh, it's conceivable that, that you'll see us here um, formally in the near future. Oh, and one other point with respect to service. One of the new unique and positive as aspects of, a, of an electric drivetrain is that it has a much lower service profile. Uh, it's efficient because we've taken all of the, the friction components out of it in part. Uh, so the wear factor is, has been vastly re reduced and because of its embedded connectivity, again with permission, uh, we can diagnose problems and very often correct problems as you sleep over your Wi-Fi system. If there's a need for a mechanical fix, um, we have service centers. That's the first thing we put in any market. We also have what we call Tesla Rangers, um, a cheap ripoff of a Texas Ranger construct, uh, where our technicians will come to your driveway uh, and any, make any mechanical uh, adjustments that are necessary. So uh, the bottom line is uh, thought all of this through, tested it in, in strenuous markets, and by the time we get here, I think you'll have an excellent customer experience. Thank you. Scott? And the question is about um, how, how to position it as a mass market product. Did I get it right? Yes. Uh, so a couple things. One quick and easy one to point out is uh, it's, I think, hard to present any product as a mass market product when it's the only one in the category. So having Climote, having other products in the category um, is, is first and foremost essential. Um, and particularly ones that, that fill different niches. So we've got many happy customers. Climate has many happy customers. People don't necessarily all want the same set of features or packaging or, or uh, anything with, with having to do with the product. And so variety really helps. But when it gets down to, to messaging and, and um, how to turn this uh, into truly mass market, I think the, the main thing for me, particularly for this audience, is not to optimize for the kinds of things, the problems that we as a group, I think, are mostly interested in and focused on, energy savings, uh, better matching supply and demand with the volatility of, of renewables. Um, those things can be part of the messaging, we believe, but are secondary or tertiary to the real things that we think are driving consumers to be interested in this, uh, namely comfort and convenience. And if you looked at our marketing when we launched our product, um, Comfort and, con and convenience were number one, and number two, savings was mentioned, but it was it was uh, more as a justification for spending the money on the product. Uh, it's only been in the last year or so that we've started to um, do empirical studies, or third parties have done empirical studies to really quantify the energy savings. Um, that now we have started to sort of pump up the volume on, on the energy savings component. Uh, and it's also only been in the last year or two that we've started to do things. Uh, so, so for example, when, when we launched the product, uh, the California Energy Codes, Title 24, uh, they, they had a requirement in there that in order to, to uh, be a thermostat that could be sold in California, it had to be sold with default settings that were, where temperatures were in an efficient range and a, and a schedule set. And we said, we think that's a bad idea. We think that will deter people from buying new thermostats, buying uh, Energy Star, excuse me, Title 24 qualified thermostats, um, because it pushes them in a way that they don't necessarily want to be pushed. Wouldn't you rather have 
uh, a large number of people buying thermostats, most of whom let us do our magic in the background to save them energy, as opposed to a small number who are uh, buying it because they're okay to be forced into it. So, so even small things like um, do you, do you, how hard do you push people to be efficient at the onset, knowing that you can, over time, uh, continue to, to push the envelope with them, though even those things make a big, big difference. Thank you very much, Scott. Okay, um, we're, we've reached the end of this session, uh, time-wise. I think we'd all agree that the three presentations have been uh, a great help, individually and collectively, for policymakers here, and I hope very much inform the drafting of the white paper. Uh, I use the words in my opening address of incrementalist and gradualist. I think we're confronted by a choice where the white paper continues the type of thinking we've had, <coughs> or is courageous enough to take on the type of thinking we just heard from Emery Lovins and from, from Dermage and, and from Scott. There's got to be a paradigm shift. And we've got to join all the dots, because there were a lot of dots here in this session. And it's to see, pardon the pun, it's the interconnectivity between all the ideas and products and services that were presented here today will make the difference to, the, to an energy policy that's holistic and is future-proofed. Uh, I hope we have the daring uh, to do that. Uh, I want to thank you for coming here and helping us in that particular task. Uh, I hope you'll come back again. I hope to have a bottle of champagne in my hand to smash over the first Tesla being put on sale uh, and to join you in driving around Dublin triumphantly. Uh, I hope, uh, Scott, you'll continue to do what as you do. Um, I think the co concept of the, of the uh, connected home is just unbelievably important. I was an early customer of Climate, I have to say, when it was exhibited about five years ago at the Energy Show run by SEAI. But I realized I've only got one other app on that, which is for parking the car. I'm really behind the curve. I suspect everybody else in the room is too. And we go away now with a fervent resolution to get up to speed. Thank you very much, both of you. And thank you. <clears throat>